Me here. Uh, my name is Chad Kirby. We farm in Albion and Brockport, about 20 minutes north of here. <clears throat> Our farm is Kirby's Farm Market. And uh, we grow quite a few different crops. I've, over the course of the day, I think I've learned that we're quite a bit different than most of the growers here. Um, we primarily grow apples. Uh, we've got about 60 acres of those. We've got 10 acres of peaches and then a couple acres of cherries and plums along with that. And then about uh, 30 acres of vegetables, which is what I focus on. <coughs> Uh, this is us. Uh, it's me, my wife Mandy, my mom and dad Tim and Linda. Uh, I'm the fifth generation on our farm. On our farm, my great great grandfather started farming back in 1878, and uh, I feel very fortunate to have been born into this into this industry because I've really come to enjoy my work. Uh, we have traditionally been conventional for a long time, and about I'd say three years ago is when the big shift happened, when we started becoming a little more regenerative. <clears throat> and I'm going to talk a little bit about all the things we do with mostly focusing on how we use biological products. So I think there's a fork in the path that we're all on right now. And one of them's a little less traveled and that would be regenerative farming. And uh, like we talked about today, there's a lot of things we still don't know, but there's a lot of work being done, and I think it's important to you know, keep contributing to that. And like Pete said, keep doing the right thing and working with nature. These are a few of the tools we've been using to work towards that. Uh, reduced tillage. We have switched two years ago to a composted chicken manure fertilizer, which are, you've all heard of Crayers, um, as well as a uh, another product called Cycle Plus that we've been getting from Brad at Cayuga Ag uh, to plant in our planter when we're direct seeding in the field. We also have been using AEA, Advancing Yield Agriculture, that was mentioned uh, in the previous presentation. We use their liquid fertilizer along with the sap analysis. And uh, we have also been interplanting alyssum, which is a uh, flowering annual in order to bring in beneficial insects, like Steve Groff mentioned. Uh, we have begun trying to eliminate all herbicides. We've been trying to use more biopesticides because those are, if you haven't heard of those, they're basically just bacteria or fungi eliminating the pest for you instead of synthetic chemicals. Uh, we've used beneficial insects in our greenhouse as well, which then you know brings that out to our vegetable field on our transplants. And uh, we've put a little more effort into cover cropping and I think uh, including multi-species cover cropping. I'm just gonna go through these first three so I can focus on, or these first tools quickly so we can focus on the biological products. Um, in order to reduce our tillage from, and stop plowing our fields, we started use, using this rototiller. Uh, we dug it out of the wheat pile. It had been out of commission for I don't know how long, but it was still in great shape. Just put some new teeth on it, and uh, we're doing a shallow rototill because rototill is still pretty um, intrusive to the soil. So we're trying to keep it shallow at only two inches, trying to just create a seed bed and something for us to work on with our vegetables. Um, that's one of the things I'm pursuing now is try, trying to learn how to grow these vegetables you know, we, we grow three different types of vegetables on our farm, and trying to do that no-till is uh, a bit of a challenge. I mentioned crayers. Um, the alyssum has been a huge help in our lettuce. That's where we started using it first. Um, we put one plant every 10 feet, which is about 10% of our field, and uh, we don't really eliminate lettuce in order to do this, we put it in the middle. And uh, one way we tried to save money this year is by buying the cheap seed, which is an open pollinated variety. You can see on the left, as opposed to the one on the right, which is a hybrid seed, which we sell as a bedding plant in our greenhouse. And 
<clears throat> always trying to cut costs, and we haven't talked about this yet, me and my dad, but I think I'm going to be going back to the hybrid seed because you can see that was just kind of overpowering our lettuce. But the, the purpose of this alyssum is to bring in um, specifically a parasitoid wasp called Aphidius colomani, which lays an egg inside the aphid and uh, eats it from the inside out. And uh, then we don't have to spray for aphids. And I got out there and looked at the lettuce the first year we tried this, and I see parasitized a aphids on the lettuce leaves. So, you know, it's evidence that this is working with very minimal inputs and that we don't have to spray insecticides. We started applying this to um, our tomatoes and pepper fields as well as using, leaving part of our farm that was, uh, you know, poor ground to grow up into a pollinator habitat to attract more beneficial insects. Uh, we've also been focusing on eliminating herbicides. That's been uh, a bit of a challenge adjusting to that. We are looking into more tools, different tools that are going to help with that transition, but herbicides, like you mentioned, Roundup is just damaging to the soil, so we're trying to get away from them completely. Uh, we've also started using finger weeders, um, experimenting with tarping, which is uh, a tool a lot of small farmers use for small plots to start out with a stale seed bed. And we're also looking into flame weeding. A couple of the biopesticides I've been using in our brassicas specifically is javelin and dipel, which is a, has a BT bacteria in it, if you're not familiar with it. So um, you need to get out there early in order to control the cabbage worms because they eat this product when it's on the leaf and it gets inside them and uh, kills them. So instead of spraying, spraying insecticides, we've been using these biopesticides to control our worms in all of our brassicas. This is my dad spreading out some predatory mites in our greenhouse. Um, one thing I love about using these products is you don't have to worry about PPE. You know, you can eating an apple while you're using it because it's perfectly safe and not harmful to humans. <clears throat> Other products we use is, in the greenhouse we buy in parasitic wasps that I mentioned earlier. They are found native outside, but it, we buy some to spike those populations in our greenhouse. We also buy uh, minute pirate bugs, which can eat thrips, a uh, very big problem in greenhouses. And we also use beneficial nematodes that we dip our plants into because they eat the, uh, lots of different problem insects or microbes that are in the soil. Uh, with cover cropping, we've been more intentional with it, I think is a good way to describe it because we've always been cover cropping. But now we are trying to successive cover crop, you know, a plant. Maybe two in a row if we have that window, get one out. And then if we have four weeks before we need to plant our fall brassicas, we'll put in some buckwheat because that's a nice quick cover crop that can really help with weed suppression. And, uh, and this is a cover crop mix we got from King's Agri Seeds. You can see there's peas um, and about nine other things. I don't know their names, but uh, diversity, I think, has been really helpful for us in these. <clears throat> So that brings me to uh, Advancing Eco Agriculture, founded by John Kempf. Uh, we primarily use them for their liquid fertilizer products, which are mostly certified organic. There's a couple that are not. But this company is a lot more than just their fertilizer products, um, which is half of the reason why I'm so invested in this company. Um, he puts out podcasts for free, which you know, I enjoy listening to him on long car rides or making deliveries, um, just learning about other farmers across the world that are trying to do the same thing we are. They put out a lot of YouTube videos that, you know, you could just <clears throat> put on in the morning or in the evening to learn a little bit more because there's a lot of information out there and you're not going to learn it all at once. So we try to chip away at it. Uh, they have launched a new social media platform which called Kind Harvest, and I think this is going to continue growing. I think they maybe launched it last year. It's, it's fairly new, um, but it's 
kind of oriented like Facebook, except you have to pay to become a member. And uh, that keeps out all the people that are just joining to, you know, be annoying. And <clears throat> so you, you pay to join Kind, kind Harvest, and uh, you can talk to people that are like-minded and have discussions and ask questions. We're trying to eliminate herbicides in our orchards, which is not something very commonly done, especially if you're not organic, which we're not. So I posted that question to you know see if anybody else has heard of it, and I've gotten a couple of responses. No silver bullet answers, of course, but uh, it's something I'm really looking forward to learning more about and, and using more. And also, um, no topic is left untouched, because farming can be really hard sometimes, and it can really wear on you mentally, and they talk about that a lot in his podcast. He brings it up, the mental health, and how, how that's something you should be thinking about, too. So how we got started with the AEA is we saw John Kemp speak at a Cornell fruit school they put on in Newark, and um, he talked about farming like I'd never heard anybody else talk about. You know, it's, like you mentioned earlier, you wake up and it's like, what are we gonna kill today? But the way they talk about farming is growing a healthy plant and trying to prevent having used these pesticides. So that really clicked in my head and uh, I mentioned it to my dad and we talked about it for quite a while and I uh, ended up calling them and found a consultant who uh, right here in New York, Cayuga Ag is the name of the business. Uh, Rod Porter here is involved with that and uh, they sent us to Harold's, he's been our consultant. And our first year we tried just six of their products because they're not cheap. They're not too expensive, but they're not cheap. And uh, now, three years later, we're using 14 because we've seen um, plenty of successes and, and want to continue using these products. The different methods that we're applying them is um, a seed treatment that called BioCoke Gold that they sell. Um, it's a mycorrhizal fungal seed treatment. We're also using their liquid product, products in furrow on our planter with uh, corn, peas, and beets. So we mix up a cocktail of about six different ingredients, and there's a specific way you have to mix these. Like Pete mentioned, you know, it's, it's a little more effort, but uh, we really think it's worth it. We also use a transplant solution um, again, that's another cocktail of eight products that are our, uh, we put down every time we transplant. And we also use foliar sprays uh, using their liquid fertilizer products in conjunction with a sap analysis. And uh, I'm still working on finishing, putting out the soil primer, which is a combination of the fish emulsion and the molasses, so the sugars he mentioned, um, to feed our biology over the winter. Because the winter for us and most farmers, I believe, are is the longest period of time where your soil will be undisturbed if you are still tilling. So it's an important thing to feed that biology over the winter and help boost it for the coming season. So the first successes we saw that were really encouraging is our spring leafy greens looked incredible, the best they've ever been. Um, just big, luscious, and had great flavor. Uh, one of the big problems we had in our bell peppers, especially red peppers, was blossom end rot, which we've learned through this uh, journey we're on is from a calcium deficiency, and the calcium deficiency is caused by spreading too much potassium. Because we were, you know, we we knew tomatoes liked a lot of potassium in order to create that nice red juicy tomato. So we were just using a triple 15 fertilizer and broadcasting on that on all our vegetable ground, and uh, really hurting our peppers. So we learned about that and stopped spreading potassium on our peppers. And uh, that first year we did that, we only had 15 percent of the blossom end rot problems our bell peppers. And these last three I'm going to elaborate on a little bit. Uh, the brassicas, sweet corn, and uh, zucchini. We've all seen successes by using these products. So I mentioned the aphids a little bit already. Um, I think those are being all taken care of by beneficial insects. Don't have to spray for aphids. Um, the worms we are taking care of with these biopesticides. And I think 
very slowly, our soil health is improving, which is improving the health of our crop, which eventually, hopefully, will help prevent the worms as well. Uh, flea beetles are a common problem with brassicas. Um, didn't have any problems with those this fall. I have to admit, I think that's partly because later in the season there's a lower pressure, but I think you know, our crop health and our beneficial insect plots are not hurting that either. <clears throat> and um, foliar sprays. Um, that's one thing about these foliar sprays that we've learned the hard way is you can get a little too high with the salt levels in those sprays and physically damage the leaves. So we have a pH and EC meter that we use for the greenhouse and next year I'm going to use that for a couple of our recipes because you don't have to use it every time you spray but each crop has a little bit of a different recipe because of the different nutritional needs. So I saw some burning happening in our cauliflower so I'm going to be evaluating that a little bit uh, next year. For sweet corn, we grow we, we grow about five acres of sweet corn in eight different plantings throughout the year, and uh, we're not using any GMO corn with BT in it because our customers let us know that you know they don't want to buy corn like that. So you know we listen to our customers, and that's what we grow. Um, the specific block of corn is what I'm talking about on this slide. Uh, we planted it two years after it was apple orchard and the, the previous year there was brassicas on it so it had not been heavily cropped yet and the only nitrogen we put down was about 200 per acre 200 pounds per acre of the crayers 822 with our planter which is a total of 16 pounds of nitrogen we also used aea's liquid products in furrow and i got one foliar spray out i didn't have time to get the other two out <coughs> And uh, that, that in furrow application, by the way, is pretty much negligible. N, P, and K, they're, uh, like Pete mentioned, those are mostly meant to bed that biology that we're putting down. And as the season went on, we were keeping an eye on it. And uh, you know, we grew this beautiful green corn. And we were scouting for worms, didn't see any worms, didn't have to spray any insecticides. and so. I think this is pretty much organic corn at this point, um, and with a total of 16 pounds of nitrogen. So I think that speaks to what biology can do for you. And in our zucchini, um, our zucchini is a big crop. We sell to Wegmans in Rochester. We deliver to about 15 different stores throughout the year, and. Uh, we haven't used fungicide on our zucchini for two years now, and we always used to have to use that for powdered mildew. It would always come in. Um, but the first time I saw powdery mildew coming in on the summer squash on the lower leaves, I called up Harold and asked him, you know, do you have anything I can do? I don't want to spray a fungicide. And he suggested adding to the typical foliar spray that we've been spraying out every week to add uh, two quarts of sea shield which is a fish emulsion and double up on the micro 5000 which is a dry powder product that has a micronutrient package as well as biological products in there and so that's what I did and kept that powdery mildew suppressed for you know the next five weeks and uh, I think usually Conventionally, we were harvesting zucchini for only about four weeks, and now without fungicides, using these products as foliar sprays, as well as you can see the drip tape here, we fertigate with these products as well. We were able to go for six full weeks of harvest, and that's what we do now. Instead of you know four plantings throughout the year, we can get through the whole summer with only two plantings by keeping the plants healthy. Some of the challenges I'd like to talk about is the salts, which I already mentioned. It's very rare. We only have that problem in our brassicas and the peas. And uh, learning how to adjust our fertilizer rates. That zucchini planting I was talking about on the sap analysis, all three forms of nitrogen were off the charts because 
you know, we put out the regular rates of nitrogen we've been putting out for decades. Um, but, you know, our soil is becoming more alive and really supporting our crops. So apparently next year we're going to be putting out less nitrogen. And we saw the same in our peppers and tomatoes. They just had too much fertilizer. <clears throat> so we're going to be adjusting that going forward. Also learning how to use these products. Um, they honestly, they have clogged quite a couple nozzles on us, but um, we're learning with that and we're learning to filter them before we put them in the tank and have proper screens in there. And it's just quite a, quite a learning process. And also learning the best practices to go forward. I think that's why we're all here is to try to learn you know, what the right thing is to do, how to grow these crops as best as possible, and that's just a big challenge all in itself. <clears throat> what I will leave you with is a joke I heard from John Kemp uh, on his podcast. So there's these two trees in a forest uh, talking with each other, and two humans walk by underneath, and one tree says to the other, oh look, there's two humans here. I'm, I wonder if they're able to communicate with each other. The second tree says, impossible, there's no way they can communicate. They, they don't have roots. Hmm. So, that's all for me, thank you. <laughs>